Yo, what's going on? It's uh, your boy Brett Ernst. Uh, another episode of the Chains Out Podcast. How you doing? Uh, got Carlos with me. How you doing? Uh, Sal's holding on. You Boom. see him in the back. <laughs> Jarrell, you did a good job. He's, a, he's balancing. <laughs> Even though you killed him. I had to make up for it. That's all right. We, we're going to, I don't know if we should get a new one or just leave him. <laughs> now that we got history with it. I'm saying. Uh, it's got but, character now. It's got more character. So what's going on, buddy boy? Nothing, man. I just uh, had a long day. And like I said, I was traveling. I was getting ready for the travel. Do you have a ritual that you do when you, before you travel? Uh, like, like things that you like, this needs to be done. Well, I, I always take my uh, my crucifix, my uh, St. Christopher charm with me mm -hmm. when I travel. Um, but other than that, no, nah, man, I mean, you know, I'm just, it's like going to work for me. Yeah, everything has to, for me, everything has to be at the door. Like every, all the suitcase, everything has to be at the door. Um, cause before I, you leave? Yeah, before I leave. Like it all has to be set the night before. And like even, iPad has to be, be all batteried up. Fucking movies have to be su stuck in there. Well, you got a long, oh, long this one, trip. Yeah, this one's going to suck. I'm uh, just flying to Phoenix. It's like 45 <laughs> minutes. Do you get do you, does, does turbulence fuck with you? Because you've been flying a lot for a long time. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, still, not really. No? No, man. I mean, I don't want to give myself the malarkey out of bad luck. But, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm used to it, man. Yeah. And I know all the tricks at all the airports and everything, though. Like I, what do you mean? Like uh, Vegas, right? So if you're in the C and D gates, the lines, always, especially if you're going to take an early flight, mm -hmm. just go through the B and A gates and then walk all the way around to the train because they're barely ever open. Yeah. Um. I mean, sometimes like because I'm clear in TSA. Yeah. The so clear line is longer than the TSA line. And, you know, everybody that goes to those gates, if you just go through the other gate or better yet, if there's no parking at Terminal mm. 1, if you're doing a carry on, just mm -hmm. go to Terminal 3. And it's 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 less traffic. So Terminal Three, yeah, because it's it's the it's all it's all international on that side. It's uh, yeah, and it's like JetBlue, and because yeah. Terminal One's the main terminal. Mm -hmm. But if you're checking a bag, you can uh, you can't really do that because you have to check in at wherever your gate is. I try not to check in anything. Yeah, uh, me always, too. Nah. <laughs> I try to be super sufficient. And um, I what, lose what, so much money on merch though. Yeah. Because like even now I'm like fuck it I'm not gonna pack it because because it's know, too much to fuck it and then wait around too that's the thing too I'm like fuck I gotta uh, wait around for this carousel. Yeah. Um. When I was on a plane one time I was flipping out right the dude see me grabbing the uh the 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 little handles and he was like you okay and I was like yeah just the turbulence fucks with me and he was like he was telling me he goes well you think the plane's gonna fall out of the sky and I go yeah and he goes it does it doesn't work that way he said what you know he kind of like started explaining to me what turbulence was and how it works and he was like. Is like it's it's just a it just bumps in the road. It's it's on it's a, it's a dirt bumpy road. And he goes also if something's too bad. He goes there's a plane flying thirty minutes ahead of us. He said now if it was so bad they would relay back to us. Hey go up to ten thousand more feet where it's a lot more easier. He goes because all it is is warm air meeting cool air and fucking hitting each other. And that's yeah. What well you here's catch. the thing though you can't pull over. You can't pull uh, over. Yeah. And, and what if you're the first plane <laughs> to get it? Yeah. To fucking... You got it radio back. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I do get nervous sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. And then he was also telling me, too, he goes, everything on this plane has been tested. He goes, it's been, I was like, yeah, but it goes to the lowest bidder, man. <laughs> <That's a> good... <laughs> but you, you, you this need, is what's going through you my brain. You need to chill right now. <laughs> it's been going through my brain right now. With and your I got theories. I don't want the bad luck on a look. I got 15 hours, 15 and a half hours up in a fucking plane. But Qantas is great that I'm going to be flying on because it's. Uh... Dude, the best international for me was. Um, uh, the Emirates is great, man. Because you went to Dubai. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, they, they hook you up. Mm -hmm. But um, as a comic, Southwest is the way to go. Always. Especially oh. now because, uh, Jarrell, you could, you could do this too because you're an entertainer. Um, especially if you're bringing merch because your bags are free. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if we talked about this. There's no change fees. Um, as long as you check in early, that's first class, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, you get right, right, right to the uh, emergency exit row and get the leg room. Get the whole leg room. Um, yeah, it's just the easiest flights, man. And they like, you know, it just depends on where you're going. But, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're flying to L.A. or Phoenix, I mean, Southwest all day. Bro. Oh, it's just a, it's like a bus ride. It's just easy up and down. <sighs> Because, you know, first class, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to sit, even if I'm sitting in the middle for 45 minutes, I'm fine. Yeah. But if you're going long, you got to go. If you're going what you're doing, you got to go at least business class or. or That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, I was like. You can't fly coach. Upgrade or something like that or see what that, what is, what's going on. I don't even know what I'm flying at, but I know that we're on Qantas. And I've, I've, I've been to Australia before. Well, I've flown to Australia. 
It's 17 hours. Yeah, it's a good, it's it's a good, it's a long fucking trip. And so it's like, I, I was thinking like, I could fall asleep for eight hours and still have to be on the plane for seven more hours yeah. awake. Uh, that's why you got to <laughs> download those movies. I'm downloading. I'm trying to figure out what seasons to get of, of watch whatever the fuck. You have any recommendations? Anything, watching anything good? Come on, man. What? I don't watch anything. <laughs> I heard the bear is good. I hear the bear is good too. Incredible. I wanted to check that out. We were talking about that too. Yeah. Um, I should download the rest of two seasons of that. Cobra Kai. <laughs> Cobra Kai all day. I've watched all of them though. So you, you threw it? Yeah, I, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the next episode. What about weeds? I used to watch weeds. I watched weeds all the way up to um season when she started like no well, spoilers or fucking this is old, but um when she started dating the the drug lord in Mexico, then that's when I kind of like fell off. But uh I liked looking at her. <laughs> She's hot. She dated feds. I killed the fed in that. In that, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was that what's your um like so okay, so you've been on TV shows and, and, and movie sets and stuff like that. What was your first experience? CSI New York. Really? Um, well, no, no, CSI it was it was Young and the Restless. Well, you're on a, a, a soap. I didn't know you were on a soap. Yeah, for like two years, I was like a background, and then they would give me uh, under fives every now and then. What's that? Uh, under five lines. Under five lines. Okay. But that's how I got into SAG and after when I first moved to LA. Uh, you know, I just went on set. Because, you know, you get your vouchers. But that was after, at the time, there was no merger. Mm -hmm. But I worked on that show for, like, almost two years, man. Really? I was always in the coffee house. <laughs> but what, what sucked is the first speaking role I had, I was playing, I was a waiter in the coffee house. So, mm -hmm. like, I was playing a college kid. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was, like, 39. <laughs> and then uh, I went, I played a waiter, and then I had to run and go really wait tables. And that's what yeah, you're like, yeah. like I'm, I'm not <laughs> you had already like a lot of background <laughs> you brought to the but table. I didn't audition for it. I, I they just kept bumping me up, you know, every now and then because, you know, I, it, once it's cool because so, soaps, you know, they they sh five days a week they aired. Yeah. And um, everybody there is like lifers. Some of them, you know, they make fucking great money and they, you know, they're they're working every day. And then when your background on those consistently, you become like part of the crew. Yeah. You know, like we were invited to all like the holiday parties, stuff like that. And then, um, but the first role I got that I auditioned for was CSI New York. Oh, that's fucking cool. And then, um, what would you what'd you do on that one? I was one of the. Uh, it was uh, Pelham Boys. It was like this uh, uh, gang. Okay. Like, like Italian gang. <laughs> but every every role since CSI, I've always been in a tracksuit. I like <laughs> right, rightfully so. But I like CSI, man. Uh, I like those crime shows. I can tell you my line. Yeah, what was Auburn dog <laughs> all day under five. <laughs> and then uh, and then I um, you know, then then they feature you in certain scenes, like you know, mm -hmm. where like you're there. But then it was like uh, flashbacks of the murder. Okay. And then um, the guy that created that show. It's such an amazing story. He's from Vegas. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I know the because the, the original was CSI Las Vegas. Vegas, yeah. And they brought it back too. And he drove the um, the tram, you know, like the the shuttle buses. Oh. And then he met a, uh, I guess he met one of those uh, CSI people, and they became friends. And then that's, I guess, that's what spawned the idea. But Anthony Zucker, I think his name is, or Zyker. Mm. Uh, look that up. But he was really cool, man. So like uh, our episode. You know, it was like a lot of Italian guys from New York. And then we had the premiere party at this Italian restaurant in the Valley. And then he showed up. Anthony Zyker. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but he, he was really nice. That was like the first real set that I was on. I got a little, my little honey wagon, like my little uh, <laughs> waiting room. Yeah. It's funny because you're talking about how like the, um, <coughs> bless you, the, uh, the, uh, the extras and then the upgrades and stuff like that. And then after that, because like. Um, a funny story. Uh, Vinny, uh, Vinny Pastor? Is it Vinny Pastor? Vinny Pastor? The big pussy. Who's big pussy? Vinny Pastor. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm a. This is a crazy because I watched Dinner for Five. I used to love Dinner for Five. That's a great show, right, man? And I, I, I bought. Uh, I'm buying my DVDs all over again. I have that in my. Uh, my. That's Favreau's show, right? Yeah, and I have season three, four, and five, and six all in my um, hard drive. But I bought season one on dvd and i'm trying to find them 
They're hella hard to find. That and inside the actor studio, you can't really find them on DVD or anything like that, or even streaming. And so uh, I used to love that show. And I remember him talking about him being the upgrade king. Like he would do things in order to figure out how to be upgraded, and 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 all of a sudden he became. He was a good fellas. Yeah, <laughs> he's the hell. Is... He's got the fur coats, and and when they're doing the scene. Yeah, he's, he's pulling in the fur coats. All. Yeah, he's got. He's in everything, and like he's like the Italian Samuel Jackson, and um and yeah, he. That's a good call. <laughs> And he, uh, so anyway, so I'm, I'm. They both say motherfucker all the time. <laughs> all the time, yeah. I'm in, uh, I'm in Paris, uh, fucking around. I'm about 18, 19 years old. And I'm in this hostel and it's hot as shit. It's the, it's the heat wave. And um, we're all in the room together and we all can't sleep. And so we're all talking and I'm talking about how much I like movies. And this, uh, this, this younger kid, he goes, he tells his sister, have you told him? And she was like, tell him no. And I'm like, tell me what? And she was like, I'm uh, Vinny Pastore's daughter. And I didn't really recognize the name at first. And she was like, he's on The Sopranos. He's big pussy. I was like, the Upgrade King. She was like, yeah, my father's the Upgrade King. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. How old was she? She was, uh, she probably, if I was 19, she probably had been about 20 23, 24. She was in college because she was talking about how she was uh, going to college in Washington or Maryland or something like that. You just but ran into her in Paris? Ran into her in Paris in a hostel fucking sweating our balls off all because there's no central air and heating. So it's all these old ass fucking molt paces and shit like that. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it's crazy the amount of like work that, mm -hmm. you know, you can get. <laughs> Extra work's great. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there is set etiquette though. You know, like um, they do wrangle you and you know, as an extra, like you hear stories where like you can't make eye contact with certain people, <laughs> you know, shit like that. But I, I've never had a bad experience, you know. I uh, the one thing I did, I had, I was an extra in the first Spider Man, and uh, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, so my my birthday is around uh, March. It's March twenty sixth. It was just last week, and um, and uh, I would always take the bus and go down to L A. and go hang out because the Oscars used to be in that around that time. And I used to go check it, uh, just check it out uh, on the like the red carpet and stuff like that, and just see all the actors and whatever, whatnot, you know. And then um, I was like, man, I go, man, I'm just, I just want to be in a movie, just one time. And this, and and I'm walking by the Chinese Man Theater, and the guy goes, hey, you want to be in a movie? And I'm like, shut the fuck up. And I got, I thought I was gonna be a porn or something like that. And he goes, now come meet me. We're gonna be do Spider Man. Meet me back here uh, at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. It was two buses. They took us all down to Long Beach, and it was the scene where they have the um, uh, where the Green Goblin is is in the uh, the World's Fair. Yeah. And uh and and uh they were it was like they go dressed like it's a New York uh fall. And so I'm wearing a hoodie and shit. But meanwhile, it's March in LA. It's hot as shit. And especially in Long Beach. I'm running and then they were like, All right, everyone for that, that's born between January and March, you guys are ones. Everyone from April to July, you guys are twos. Everybody else, you guys are fours. All right, all right. Ones you run back and forth, north and south. Twos you run east and west. And threes, I want you to run in a circle. All right. And action. And I was like, okay, cool. First five takes. I'm like, this is awesome. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> 20 <laughs> takes, you're sweating. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Your bitch ass dad is uh <laughs> one of those extras that overact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he started fucking he's flailing. Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, looking, he's got he's, with me. <laughs> he's looking in the camera and shit. <laughs> yeah. He's spiking the camera. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the Buffalo Bill dance. Yeah. I fuck me. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's talking when they're calling him the ma you know, pantomime. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I'd never want to do this again. I remember they gave us a sandwich, like a, a like one sandwich at, at like a break, and I was like, nah, I'm good. Went and sat down and it was over. But yeah, that's I, I mean, you know, uh, all that stuff is, it's fun, man. I, I tell everybody though, if if you're gonna, if you want to do it, I mean, at least do some extra work every now and then. But then you see, it's hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. But they get they get treated like shit, man. Sometimes, you know, like if there's and you know there are actors. I I, I get it because like you have very little time. Mm -hmm. You know where like all the actors have to get go to eat first, and mm -hmm. then crew. You know because they have to get their food and go. So it's not like an ego thing. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, you'll see that <laughs> see an extra straggle in the front, <laughs> and then you're like, just let him go. <laughs> you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't. He don't know any, but he's hungry. <laughs> but no, like you're on a, you got to turn it over. But they wrangle him a lot. I've I've heard. Uh, I mean, I, I hadn't experienced anything bad, but I've heard some some bad stories. I know uh, a certain. Con I mean, I I can't. I, I would usually name the name, but like. Holtzman said it's not gossiping mm -hmm. if uh, you don't mention names. Yeah. Uh, there's an actor friend of mine that was on a set. I'll tell you afterwards. Oh, okay. And uh, he was having a cigarette. And the uh, extra wrangler or whatever ran over and says, what the hell are you doing? You need to get over there. 
And he's like, I'm taking a smoke break. Relax. So mm. the guy started acting all fucking mean and shit towards him. Mm. And then he ran like to go get the producer. Mm -hmm. So the producer came back and said, what are you doing to the guy? He goes, this guy's one of the stars in a movie, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then he looked at him and then he goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I thought you were an a and just an extra. And then my friend was like, that's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what if I was? Well, yeah. You know what I mean? That that's how you talk to people. That gives you the right to so, be so yeah. Mean. yeah. And then you know he kind of checked them, mm -hmm. and he checked them a little publicly, and then like you know you saw the extra smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know it is it, it is a lot of hurry up and wait, and people that like do extra work, man. They only I mean they make good money for the day. Yeah. But I mean, God, man, they sit there for 14, 15 hours, man, sometimes. Fuck, man. One of my uh, goals, both of my, a lot of my goals are gone now. They're, not, they're off the air. But one of my goals was also to the uh, Law and Order. I wanted to always do a Law and Order because uh, that's like, uh, you, you see the, uh, like, the people, like, they did a, a back thing on it and showed how many actors come out of Law and Orders. Like, the, even Bill Burr did a, a Law and Order at one point. <laughs> but Well, those shows run forever, man. Yeah, dude. You know, if they're, if they're really good and, you, you know, you, if you can get on one of those, mm -hmm. whew, that's good money. What that's be, how you look at it, after you know, after a while. What was one of your goals when you first started? Um, As far as stand-up? Yeah, like, stand like, like, okay, it's like, so some of my goals were to be, like, I wanted to be on David Letterman really bad, but David Letterman's gone. Another goal I wanted was to be on The Office because I really liked The Office when it was coming out. And so it's like, but those things are both are gone now. Like, they can, I can never do those. Uh, you know, Did you have anything like that? Mm, I mean, you know, you, you wanted to get on a sitcom, but I used to say I wanted... But nothing uh, in particular. I wanted No, I just wanted to be famous so I can get more stage time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. No, really. I mean, my goal was always just, uh, you know, it's hard to say because everything's parallel. Um, I mean, I definitely... A goal of mine still is, you know, to executive, you know, executive produce, write, mm -hmm. get get a show. But, you know, you I sold a couple mm -hmm. earlier in my career, but, you know, that never really took off. And um, but you just take it as it comes, man. Mm. You know, you just take it as it comes. I mean, I've done late night sets before, but uh, I did uh, Kilborn. I did. Uh, oh, great Kilborn. I no. did um, Lopez. I did. uh what else? Oh, Steve Harvey's big time because I had a deal with WB Network. Okay. So they 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 threw me on that. Um, I've done a couple. It's odd though. Some of them is weird because like you're you're not playing to the audience. You're playing to the camera. And the yeah. audience is to the right of you. <laughs> yeah. It's... And then I, I'm, you know, they and you gotta submit everything you're gonna say word for word, which is like awful for me because yeah. I I don't write. <laughs> yeah you know i'm all stupid i don't shit. write nothing down it's all it's up all here, up, up here. here you're you're an embarrassment <laughs> to yourself <laughs> and to your family the other day christopher i uh, saw you <laughs> your hair was in the toilet <laughs> disgusting <laughs> he was a little mad uh well, i did read for sopranos and you had to stay word for word on that mm -hmm. i read for curb yeah and uh that was fun but you know when you're doing that type of show you there are perimeters it's not all improv because you got to give information you know what i mean to, yeah. to move the story along and those guys come from like like a lot of those those writers like dave chase and um like sam men's men's and some of those guys are all like like theater kind of like writers because like you can't in like a play you can't change any words at all there's no improving at all you have to stick in the in that so it's like those guys are definitely every um and and uh has to be said and they don't fuck around yeah, he, he was pretty uh i read for uh Remember when the guy comes to the table and uh, he wipes Meadow's mouth? Oh, yeah, with the cream. He's, yeah, he the, some, the yeah. guy that she was having dinner with. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if they made it another character. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the auditioning is what I tell every every young actor is, you know, take auditioning classes. That's an art form in itself. And, you know, when you do it so long, you know, in the beginning you take everything personally. You know, because <laughs> you're like, you know, but they you, you never know what they're looking for. I remember uh, uh, one time I read for something and they tested me, but they were just putting me on the back burner because they already had offers out to other actors. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, they'll offer the names and then you go through the audition process and, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at your phone every two minutes waiting to hear back. Yeah. But what they do is they'll audition people, get somebody they like in case the actor turns the offer down. And then they have. So you're like a backup. That's what happened, uh, Jay Moore on uh, Jerry Maguire. Uh, Luke Wilson already had the part and Jay Moore came and auditioned for it. And pretty much they were like, fuck, we like this. And they, he ended up getting it. He ended up taking it from from dude. 
because they liked him so much. You know, uh, that's why I always say, too, man, like that was the best part about being in L.A. Mm -hmm. is, you know, going through the process, learning the process more. I mean, because as far as L.A. New York comics, yeah. I mean, it's back then I, I always felt L.A. comics because New York comics were always known as better stand ups mm -hmm. because, you know, they had more stage time. The clubs were, you know, it was grittier. They were they were grinding more. Um, L.A. comics, you know, were, were known to be more like actor stuff but yeah i mean again you take you wherever you go you know what i'm saying like whether i was in new york or la i'd still be the same comic because i still grinded and hustled but i would say the la la comics had more knew more about the business because you're yeah. in meetings constantly you're in auditions constantly that's one thing too i was like i didn't like that's why i never liked la i was just very like you know i i <sighs> How can I say this? I really like I was into stand up comedy. I always wanted to be a comedian. So I had the utmost respect for it. And I loved it. And I hated when I came to L.A. And I would hear how people treated it like a entry level position in the conglomerate of of the entertainment business. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that. It was the data analysis of, like, or the data operator uh, input. You know, it's like very bottom, bottom, bottom rung thing. And I didn't like that. Well, I mean. <clears throat> you, you kind of get that kind of now. With, I mean, you, you've always had that. Even before when I started, you had the development era. So you had a lot of actors that got in a stand-up to hopefully get a development deal, right? Yeah. Because they were giving out sitcoms in the 80s to, to stand Hand them all out. And then when I was in, all that kind of ended. I was on the tail end of that. Mm -hmm. And then when the reality shows Oh, and the reality boom? You had a lot of people on reality shows, and then a lot of them thought they could do stand-up. And then, you know, they were trying to take up some stage time. And then now you've kind of got the TikTokers, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And the social media people that want to do stand up. And yeah, you know, the, Hey, I always say the difference between a, a middle and a headliner is, you know, mm -hmm. how many tickets you can yeah, sell. I mean, how many shit you can move. Cause you know, you could be doing comedy two years, but if you're selling out, Hey, they'll it's put a business, you up. You know? Yeah. It's a business. They'll put you up and then watch you fizzle out. That's I will say, too. uh, when I got the first, not the first screenplay I wrote, but when I got optioned, mm -hmm. That was that was because you know I, I moved. And explain to people that don't know option means. Some people don't know what. Well, that, it's that when the quarterback lingo. decides if he's, <laughs> he's going to keep the ball or he's going to dish it off to the and, tailback and look for the hot route. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so an option is if you write a screenplay, a production company wants to take it, so they'll give you money to hold it for a few months as they try to shop it around. Mm, okay. And, uh, but every opportunity that I got came from me being on stage people seeing me and then you mm -hmm. know and then when they you do what's called generals where they like a network exec or a casting director might see you and they might be casting something and what's great about casting directors is that their their goal like they take pride in casting mm -hmm. like they they love getting mm -hmm. those right parts so people would come to the improv or the laugh factory but dublin's that that night at dublin's which uh, we i think we talked about before yeah i pulled a lot of stuff out of that so mm -hmm. casting directors will come up to me and give me a card and then say have your manager or agent call me mm -hmm. and then they set up generals and then you go sit down and you talk to them and then they have you read for them mm -hmm. you know they'll give you sides and then um you know they'll keep you in mind yeah but, uh that type of stuff. So uh, I was on stage one night and there was a guy that um, pulled me to the side and he was talking about, uh, you know, uh, any projects that I had. And he, you know, and I said, yeah, because I'm always writing. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, a scripts, not stand up. I mm -hmm. just, I can't write stand up. No, I just I, perform it and remember it. I think we had this talk too where I was like, I don't write funny scripts or funny screenplays. Like all my shit is very serious and drama driven. Cause like, I perform stand up. I perform being funny. I just can't sit down and write funny. So uh, I went in there, and then he asked me what I had, and I and I had a couple of things, ideas that I pitched. He reacted to one. I had it already written. Gave it to him. He read it. Fucking loved it. Mm. And because um, we bonded through freestyle music, that's what it was. Oh, here we go. No, 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 for real. <laughs> Take a uh, shot, everybody. I was talking about it on stage. I was talking yeah. about it on stage, and he's like, "Yo, I love that." And he goes, "I'm episode. doing a, I'm doing a documentary on freestyle," and I said, "Get out of here." And then we we were talking, and then um, you know that that was like the introduction. Then I said, "Yeah, I got this whole script." That centers around that type of scene, mm -hmm. and then he he just was like, "Let, I, let me read it." Yeah, and uh, you know, and then he's like, "Let's option it." And I'll, uh, there's a story about that too. How there's always a story. <laughs> uh, we, I'll tell you off air. <laughs> okay. Only because there was an act, there was a movie that they were producing at the time. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I was on the slate to be next, and then this movie basically oh shit the bed and now shit the bed and and, and they then, they lost a lot of money and uh, then it kind of kicked the can down the road and mm-hmm. so yeah and then the um it's funny because like is it weird that I, I maybe I'm not built for I don't like talking shit even if it's facts but well, this, you're not talking shit but it's like behind the scenes type stuff you know what I mean that's where, what a podcast is man we're, we're having no a no I meant like, like talking about it like I like you know. I'm telling you a story by leaving out all the good stuff. Yeah, you, you, yeah, I, 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 I've hung out with you long enough to where I, I yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, we, we'll, we'll skip over that part because you know. But I, you're a stand-up guy for that. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> most, you know, man. Just air it out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, you know, I still, I'm still. Uh, That's a whole trait. <laughs> nah, man, I'm still conditioned. <laughs> yeah, well, like it's a, it's a old, it's a, it's a old trait to where th- that, that's not a, the, the talking shit on other people. That's a hoe trait, but the other, the trait that you know, like hey, sh- 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 that's that's a, that's an older. Uh, like I said, when I got in the stand up comedy, and I found out like, oh, I thought I found my people, but I didn't find my people. I thought I was gonna be hanging around people that had the same moral values as me. Nah, but I found out, oh shit, I'm in a whole different basket of fucking crabs, man. I did not know that it was like this. I, I noticed shit too, man. Like, yeah, like. Like I, I'll I'll see Fifty Cent talk about things, mm-hmm. and it's that it's that mentality. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> or like you know you you'll hear older or people my age like Gen Xers talk a lot. But what's weird to me too is that you know, again, not to get into anything, but you know, when you're raised in the Northeast around Italians, you don't really talk about mm-hmm. stuff. Well, that's- like you're conditioned for things, man, which is still mind boggling to me. That's some like Sammy the Bull has a podcast. Yeah, you know <laughs> like I thought you're not supposed to say. And, and I'm not even no. I'm not even involved in that shit. And you're still very careful what you say and who you say it to. Yeah, it still bothers you. Me and Key were talking about this earlier. Me and Key Lewis were talking about, but it, about how like I don't fuck with certain comics because they post too much. They talk too much online. Like. Let's say I book them for a show or take them with me somewhere and they got a problem. They don't talk to me about the problem. They go on and do some subliminal, you know, uh, hit about, you know, such and such. Was at a comedy club, really didn't enjoy the da-da-da-da. And it's like, well, you, instead of going to the, to, to the public about it, you should have came and just talked to me and we could have took care of it right then and there. Absolutely. But now I can't bring you along because now I don't know what else you might have a problem with later on down the line and have and start going nah, to man, other people. Man. That's just not good. Yeah, that's that's... That's some bitch shit right there. Yeah. Dog. No, you 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 know you always talk man to man about it. I mean, there was you know sometime I, one time I was at a club and and uh, I wanted to talk to the middle, mm-hmm. and you know I'm not gonna. There was uh, there was a bunch of times, but uh, <laughs> you know I wanted to do it personally, and he, he was like, no, nah, I don't want to. I was like, all right. Yeah. You know, I one time one kid did something where uh, the owner uh, was gonna fire him. Yeah. And I'm like, you can't fire the kid. You can't take money off the table. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll just move him around. Dude, that's uh, that's another thing we were talking about. We hit today, too. I was talking about how, like, even if I don't like you, I will not take money out nah, of your you pocket. you can't take food off another person's pocket. I won't tell a booker not to book you. I won't tell anybody else. I'm just like, yo, that's none of my business because it's bad. Uh, I say karma. You say malokia. Is that what it is? No, it's bad luck. <laughs> bad luck, yeah. I don't, I don't take no money out of nobody's pocket. I don't fucking hate well, on them. It's, it's not thing. even about the luck. It, to me, it's like, you know, you just, I'd rather you don't remain do indifferent than, than, you know, I don't hold grudges like that. It's minor to a major. I'm, yeah, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm not vindictive and none of that stuff, man. It just it is what it is. You just forgive and move on. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you, you try and rectify it and do the right thing. And, you know, again, it, 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 if the person's being malicious or then then yeah. then we got to we'll, we'll talk it out, you know, however we got to talk it out. But if it's just somebody that doesn't know any better or kind of fucked up, mm-hmm. you know, but still is like a nice person not trying to, you know, maybe yeah. just just fucked up. Then you know you, you just you teach them a lesson without hurting them. Yeah, I don't mean physically, like you know, in the pocket or or feelings, um, or you know, take a gig away from somebody. It's just not. I, don't, I, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I think we are different, bro. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I've had the same run-ins with comics mm-hmm. where you know we're trying to navigate a certain way. Yes, the way we navigated through things, and mm-hmm. then. Um, then you run into people that just don't understand that reciprocation. Yeah, or... they they're like you're like you're breaking a, breaking the rules right here. They're like, oh, I didn't even know there was rules. Who cares about those rules? And it's like, ah, see, that's that's the problem. You don't even fuck. You get no respect. There was um, 
uh, I, I like we talk about it too a lot in the in the festival circuit too. Like because the bookers will come out, industry will come out, and it's something they stress a lot. And these kids still don't get it. They're like, we read. They say we read your guys's social media. We see what you're doing. We see who you're talking about. We see how you're acting on social media. And most of the times, we hate to say this, but we're not booking you because of what you do on your social medias. And I'm like, yeah, dude. And as soon as I heard when, when I heard that like years ago, like I'm telling you, this is about six, seven years ago, I stopped posting jokes or thought process or opinion pieces. It's like, you know what? Yeah, we'll save this all for later when I when I write something better enough and I'll perform it on stage. But yeah, all you do is post. I mean, your well, there's there's one thing if you know you're you're doing something about life, and then there's another thing where you're just ranting on something that's none of your business. And then you get into comments, and then there's people fighting in comments, and you're fighting in comments, and it's like, no, nah, it's not a good look. It's not a good look at all, man. And a lot of these cats... I just, it's a waste of time, man. I mean, even now, even before, like, I, I never understood these people that fucking write comments. <laughs> yeah. Even, you know what I mean? And they go in, they, they go in and, like, a whole dissertation or whatever. Yeah. Like, people that write Yelp reviews. What the fuck? Just, just don't go. Yeah. <laughs> I did not like, we got there at 12 o'clock. It was packed, but we had called ahead. I was mad that we, like, what the fuck? <laughs> My coffee was cold. I ordered it. Yeah, like, <laughs> Why are you ordering coffee at a comedy club for? Don't you got nothing better to do? <laughs> Your bitch ass dad does that. He writes, <laughs> yeah. he, he writes Yelp reviews. Yeah. He's like, he's got badges and shit for like, you know, when they give you, uh, when you do so many reviews. You did, you did 37 reviews this month. You're a, <laughs> you're a general, uh, bro, brewer. Um, well, like, you know, listen, man, uh, to me, um, in any business, it's about reciprocation. It's about respect. It's about, you know, doing your job, showing up on time, um, you know, doing the right thing. And mm -hmm. throughout my 27 years of doing this, because it, it will be the end of April, um, yeah. I've seen just I, comics just do things. It just is mind-boggling. <laughs> Not show up for press. Come in hammered, dude. Uh, yell at staff for no fucking reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember when I was middling, I would see things and I'd be like, "What is? What are you doing?" Like, even if it's just not the whole way to treat a person, that mm -hmm. don't, don't you know that you don't see the big picture here, pal? Yeah. You know, even like even strategically, you're you're fucking up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's yeah. so many reasons not to do it. I mean, number one is just be a fucking person. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've seen it the other way too. It's not like it's always the talent's fault. Mm. You know, I've seen there was uh, one manager that I worked at a club one time. Just oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that person, I was like, what? You know, mm. but you know what's your reputation follows you. Yes. So like, you know, if so, if somebody said something that Brett did this, they'd be like, no. Mm. And you know, obviously they took my side over that incident. Yeah. And uh, because I've worked with them a thousand times and never had a problem. Mm. And then they've had problems with this person. You know, every, that's the other thing, too, man. <laughs> it, what, you, whenever something happens to you, like with a person, and you know you're right, you have mm. to assume that's happened to them a bunch of times. <laughs> and usually they find themselves in the same situation over and over and over and over again. And they have that blind spot where they blame everybody else. But in reality, you just, you just step back, yeah. let it play out. And then, you know, the, I forgot who said it, but, uh, they said the truth is like a lion. You just let it free and it, and it defends itself. Mm -hmm. It may take a little while, but sooner or later, you know, yeah. you'll, you'll get vindicated. If, if you know you're right, if you, if you're pretending that you're not right, then it ain't going to work out for you. Yeah. You got to sell that lie and sell it and sell it and sell it. And you know, there's times <clears throat> I fucked up. You just, you know, you just apologize and, and, uh, try and rectify it. But again, I've, I've just seen it. Too too many fucking times, <laughs> especially on like morning shows, man. When morning radio isn't as big as it used to be, there are some markets that sell. Dude, I wish I had that video. I don't know. I'm gonna find it of what you did. Of yeah, what, what I did to you on on the morning radio. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> but like <laughs> but like they, uh, I've seen comics just burn bridges with the morning show people. Oh yeah, yeah. Just fucking coming in and being all drunk or or, or just, just like showing up or having an ego. Or, oh, yeah. I loved doing it, man. I was those those were the cool things to me, man. When that one, because I came at the tail end, I got to be on some morning radio, and I fucking I was I was enjoying the shit out of it, man. Hanging out, and you know, I, I'd want to stay longer. I'm like, can I read the news? Can I be on this shit? Um, Even being on set sometimes, not on Cobra Kai, but other shows I've done. Mm -hmm. There are people that are like, God, the days, you know, and, and I just feel like, don't you remember mm -hmm. how many auditions you failed? I mean, like just to be on set. 
Yeah. And to to get paid what you're getting paid mm -hmm. and to act. Um, Dude, I every time you I have like to put that in, in context. Every time a, a comedy in perspective. Club, I'm sorry. Oh no 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 I'm sorry. No, but to, 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 to elaborate more on your point, um, every time I get a call from like a comedy club or something like that, like hey, uh, we someone fell out. Can you come in tonight? I always, if even if I'm tired, and I don't want to do it. I'm like hey, two year comic. When Carlos was two years in, he would have loved to get this call. You have to do this for that guy. And I and I go every time, and I'm fucking and and I never regret it though. Like even like even though I was tired and da 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 da. I never regret going and doing the set and figuring something new out or figuring it out or going even hanging and seeing everybody too for a quick second. That just that just happened to me. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I would have done anything in the beginning of my career to headline the improvs. Yeah. And, I mean that was just that. I mean that was a goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know now I've known everybody for years and you know I got a call. And, hey, you want to stay over and do Friday at the improv and you know. And I just got, I did, I'm going to be there this Friday. Oh, yeah. And at Tempe. And um, it's short notice, mm -hmm. but, you know, the ticket sales aren't going to be on my back right now because yeah. it's one day. Mm -hmm. And I, th same thing. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I would have, if you would have called me when I started, I would have fucking. <sighs> I would have been made like, flyers, fucking telling yeah. everybody. Ah, well, they didn't have flyers. I would, they had real flyers. <laughs> they, back had real then. they had to go to go on the post. That would have went. Bowl. I wouldn't have been able to. They had to get printed up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, that that type of stuff, man. Yeah, and and that, I, I don't know. Again, that's probably just because of the circumstances we were raised in. Mm -hmm. That you're you're grateful for things, but then there's the other. Well, the other thing too is that I um, I uh. I like doing favors as well, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of these these bookers I've known before they were bookers, and if they're in a jam, yeah, I can help them out. I'll help them out. Dude, you said that. You know what's funny is um, that was one of the things I was telling people because like how I would got started getting the headlining spots is I would call clubs or I'd send them stuff, and then I'd be like, I'll come during. Like I would go to Arizona in July and August because don't nobody want to go in when it's hot as fuck or even like to Chicago when it's fucking in January or February. Like, you know, if they don't have to, they won't. They're like, I'll wait for a better month to go out there or something like that. And so like I would always do the the months that people didn't want to come in. I was known as a, um, as a, the guy referred to me as you're a just funny weekend. He goes, I know that you're not going to turn people away and I know the the, the, the shows are going to be good. So blah, blah, blah. And that's how I started thinking. Cause then you, and then you, now that you know that you could do the time. When someone cancels, now they bring me in whenever someone cancels, and then I also be, get, get my date and I get in rotation. So sometimes cl clubs won't bring you back once a year. They used to do once a year. Now it's like 18 months. You ever notice that now? It's getting. Well, it's always uh, been. It's, it's always been nine. The, the, the time frame's no less than nine months. Uh, no more than 18 months? Yeah, it's usually between nine and 18 months. Yeah, so like I was like once every year. That's how I would get it. And then, But sometimes since I would do it that way, I would get two headlining spots in, in a year. Because of the uh, the fallout or whatnot. There was an old uh, comic joke about that. What's that? Was that every nine months? Because you know, if you clip a waitress, she come back nine <laughs> months later. She could be pregnant. <laughs> you stressing out? That's the other thing too, man. Like I was very fortunate to start when I started because I I worked with a lot of the older comedians, mm -hmm. you know, and and learned a lot from them. Even though the road's a little different now and everything's different now, but oh, yeah. the etiquette's the same. But t picking up those gigs, one of the best, best weekends I ever had in stand up is on uh, a last second, and uh, and I love both the Dorfmans that run the Zanies. Oh, okay. And my buddy Joel, who I've known since he was you know young, that owns all the improvs in in Arizona now, mm -hmm. and the ones in South Florida. They love you, by the way. I was I did it not too long ago. Uh, was it Jessica? Or uh, Melissa. Melissa. Yeah. The, Justin. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We got history, man. Yeah. They were yeah, like, well, I, I knew them when they were servers. You know, again, I hate, I hate saying this because, again, it, I, I hate saying it because there shouldn't be any other reason. But just for this reason alone, mm -hmm. when you're nice to the staff, you never know who or what's going to move up and be where. Yeah. Like at the Tempe Improv years ago, Adam Egan and Paige, the one Paige used to book the Improv in, in L.A. and Adam, mm -hmm. the Comedy Store, and now the Mothership. Mm -hmm. They were both servers at Tempe Improv. At Tempe Improv. And yeah. we, we used to go out and hang out. And, um, I mean, I just like kicking it with them anyways mm -hmm. because, you know. But I'm saying that they become these two major. Fucking bookers or yeah. personalities in comedy. And, yeah, Adam's known. Uh, but, Very. again, uh, so, wait, this was one of the best weekends ever. Jarrell, you'll love this. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm in LA. I get a call on Wednesday. They're like, Brett, can you come to to Nashville? This this would be a, my couch story that I would tell. Mm-hmm. They go, can can you come to Nashville and work? You know, it's last second, and I had, I mean, I didn't even unpack my bags. Yeah, yeah. And then Joel's like, please do me the favor, and I'm like, all right. And then they said, uh, they said, well, look, this is a unique situation. You're going to be headlining, okay. But Jimmy Fallon, did I ever tell you this story? No. But Jimmy Fallon, he because he was this was before he got the Tonight Show, mm-hmm. he, before when he was doing his first talk show, the Jimmy Fallon show. Mm. So he was going around uh, opening. He had a, a headliner that he was touring with, and uh, but he didn't want to announce. So you know he was getting his legs back a little. I do remember you telling me. Yes, I do now. So they go, look, uh, you can't advertise. It's going to be Brett Ernst with special guests. Mm-hmm. So I said, cool. And I guess, you know, Jimmy, that they had looked at the list and, you know, he was like, yeah, I know that, you know, Brett's a good guy. And we had, we had met a couple of times. Jimmy's awesome, by the mm-hmm. way. One of, I'm, I, he's fucking amazing as a yeah. person, as yeah. I, just, I mean, dude, I'm not, we had, I had the best weekend with him. Mm-hmm. They said, but you can't advertise it. So I fly in Thursday, I get right from the plane to the club and it's packed. And there's television cameras and shit. There's a tour bus in the front. There's a helicopter. So I said, I said to, um, I said to Brian, I said, uh, I said, yo, I didn't say a word. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, no, no, no. He goes, uh, CBS was shooting a show, uh, Hidden Talents of the Stars, mm-hmm. and Clint Black was gonna do stand up. Oh, okay. So they had the audience didn't know he was going to be there. Uh huh. All right. Yeah. So they they packed it. It was like a not a paid audience, but it was like a free show. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever done Nashville's and Zany's Nashville. I didn't do that. God, uh-huh. the club's phenomenal. And you have the bottom row, but then they have a balcony up top. Mm-hmm. So long story boring. I I show up. Clint Black was there. Jimmy Fallon was there. And you know, and I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. And Clint, Clint was a uh, great guy, a gentleman, awesome guy. Oh, s- s- stand up, dude. <laughs> so the poor MC goes up. He's only allowed to do like five minutes, and he goes uh, to the crowd, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special guest tonight. Uh, you may know him, Clint Black. So everybody starts clapping, <laughs> yeah. And then he walks out on stage, and I mean, dude, the place fucking erupted. I mean, we're in yeah, Nashville. Nashville. Women were crying and shit. Country singer. And you know, the country singers always tell you their first name. He's like, hi, I'm Clint Black. We're like, we know who you are, motherfucker. <laughs> so he did 10 minutes, and uh, man, it was, and again, I'm not, I wouldn't say it, I mean, he was killing it. Uh-huh. And, you know, because he's he's a performer. Yeah. Now, granted, he was reading jokes, but he was still killing it. Mm-hmm. So he gets off stage, people are freaking out, and then, then the MC's like, guys, stay seated, we have another special guest. You know him from Saturday Night Live. Jimmy Fallon. And then they're all like, what the uh, fuck? Yeah. Then Jimmy comes out, does uh-huh. a solid 20. Now, meanwhile, I'm in the back going, what the, the fuck, fuck man? is going on, man? You know, why, why, don't you, why don't you dig up Pryor and bring up <laughs> Willie Nelson or something? <laughs> so then when they brought me out, they're like, all right, here's your headliner. Uh, 14 of you might have saw him in a documentary with Vince Vaughn. <laughs> Dude, I came out. You could just feel the whole room go, ah. <laughs> and then I, and my opening line was, you know, well, how the fuck you think it feels to be me right now? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, after the show, we all hung out because, you know, I, I know a lot of the guys that played for the Titans, a few of those. And mm-hmm. then they came down to the show. And then we all went out in Nashville. I went to the hockey game that week. Uh, Jimmy's just very generous guy, really sweet guy. So now we go to this place that there's like an after hours in Nashville. It's called, uh, you know who Big and Rich is? They're like country singers. No, no, no. They own like this private club for like all, all, all it's like country western singer, NFL players. It's like uh, a private club. It's open late. Oh, shit. But it's like a membership. So you go. Mm-hmm. So they invited us there. And then uh, Jimmy played guitar and sang. Yeah. Uh, I played the drums. <laughs> and uh, one of the dudes from Big and Rich, I forget which one, uh, played. And we, we sang. And, and just hung and just, out. I, I, was, I was just in a band. <laughs> An impromptu well, band. They had, they had one drumstick. <laughs> so I was like doing this, like, you know, like I was the, the drummer from Def Leppard. Yeah. With one arm, I mean, I was trying to play, but uh, it was just, it was fucking phenomenal, man. That's it was such awesome. a good time, bro. Damn. And, and that was a that was a fallout. Yeah. 
That was a fucking yeah. All of a sudden, I mean, it was, was one of the best. It, a, it was one of the best weekends <laughs> of my life. Impromptu event. You uh, fallout, but you had uh, Clint Black open for you, and also uh, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> all these guys, and then fucking went and impromptu band with them as well. Damn full. Uh, and it was it was for the weekend or just for one night? It was no, the whole weekend. Of, oh, the whole weekend. Oh shit. Dude, we went out to eat, and then uh, it was just a blast, man. It was. It really was. It was such a good time that weekend. I haven't. I haven't ever done Zanies or anything like that. I just only did the Chicago ones, but the uh, in Nashville, I only I went to Venice. It's fucking cracking. Dude, Nashville's great because, you know, a lot of those musicians are a lot like comics. Yeah. And they're a lot like professional wrestlers, too. Because remember, I, I hosted professional wrestling on MTV. Oh, did you? Yeah, 2006. It was called Wrestling Society X. And <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge mark for wrestling. Um, and uh, to listen to the wrestlers talk. Yeah, they perform. And the then, rocks. And to know country singers. Mm hmm. And in a no comics, it's the same fucking conversations. Bro. Yeah. Well, too, they like during uh like when they're playing, they, they, they grind the, out every every dollar. In the middle of their set, you know, they'll have to, you know, while everyone's changing up or whatever to drop to a different quarter or anything like that. You know, like, yeah, they'll they'll have a little banter with the audience. So they've already they're used to the But back there's and a forth. circuit for country singers, right? Over there, yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, they'll go and they'll play all these different bars and clubs and then uh every floor is different. That's crazy to me. And then wrestlers, it's the same thing. I mean, mm. here here you had these wrestlers that, you know, were on a TV show, but then they were talking about like, you know, a a, a promoter in Modesto <laughs> that is paying like fifty dollars a match. But yeah. you know, and the guy's like, Can I ride with you? My car doesn't work. <laughs> same conversations as comics and, and musicians. It was a trip because uh, I remember like a comic told me a long time ago, he was like, they don't pay us to do stand up because they pay us to take long car rides and sleep in shitty hotels. He goes, that's what that's what they pay us for. Those those are the things we don't want to be doing. He goes, but the stand up is something that we want to do when we do that for free. And I was, he was like, don't tell him, though. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, dude, it's 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 what we signed up for. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, man. You get these people that you sign up for. it. This is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've been. I mean, I was all for it. I'm all in love with it. I came back from, you know, like I said, traveling the world. I got. I got addicted to traveling. Where I would. I would. I would get a job, save up for uh, six months to buy a plane ticket, and then I'd save up for another two months, and then be, and then just quit my job and I just go somewhere. And that's why I said, like, I already been to Australia because I took off over there, started traveling over there, took off to China and fucking checked out China. And then I haven't been to South America though. That was one of the ones I wanted to get to. And then, and uh, Jor <laughs> Jory, <laughs> you, Jorel, uh, it's oh. Jorel, Jorel <laughs> is French. <laughs> you said you got stationed in, in, uh, in, in Paris or no, not Paris, but, uh, in Germany, Italy, Italy. Italy. Okay. Italy. And hey, God bless. <laughs> you, I, you gotta go, man. You gotta go check that I out. Well, eventually, man. You got to. That's one of the things, man. It's just. Dude, it's it's it, like right, like tell me, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. Like you can't even describe it on how cool it is to walk and see the fountain of uh, was it uh, uh, Tripoli or um, Sam Tripoli? Uh, no, <laughs> De Farnese, uh, the the fountain of De Farnese or some shit like that. That's, that's so. Bad. It's my ex wife I, lived lived in Rome. Really, for a little while, yeah, because that's where her grandfather was from, and I know I got family over there. But you know, it's funny too. Like the the Italians in Italy, they. They're always shitting on Italian right? Americans. Yeah. yeah, dude, all the comments. Like they can't do the math on this. They're like, "Why do you call yourself Italian?" You're American. Like, yeah, I'm American, but here, yeah, you know, we're our own thing. Yeah, fucking uh, fettuccine Alfredo, a chicken fettuccine Alfredo doesn't that exist. Mean, that's that's it doesn't exist over there. I remember I tried to get it. They're like, duh, duh, duh. like disrespectful. My ex girlfriend's. Uh, uh, her father used to go, uh, I'm I'm Italian, I'm fat. And then he went to Italy. He was the fattest guy. <laughs> <laughs> because the food is so pure over there, man. Like, it's really hard to get, like, fat, fat. You don't well, see fat people either. No. Because there's all, all that walking that everyone's doing, and then you're eating, like, such pure food. Fuck, dude. Dude, my older brother, when he was there, he was in Sicily. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I guess, you know met with some cousins or whatever but they were they were eating and they were having muscles they went out in the fucking boat and then they had the little uh you know where they just pulled the muscles up fucking fresh that's how you doing well, I, 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 and it's from your mom's side right my it, mom is uh i have my family from is from catania and messina 
And then I, my grandmother was from Naples. God bless. God bless. We're all Southern Italian. <laughs> like this, the fucking, um, I was watching uh, Casino because uh, I'm, I'm introducing uh, um, Amber. Uh, no, no, her daughter. Her daughter to a lot of the um, uh, movies. So she watched Godfather 1 and now she watched Godfather 2, which is something too. Kids don't have, they don't have the attention span because we're watching it and it's developing. But and I'm, and I'm looking at her knowing that she's not getting what's happening. Even the conversation that they're having, she's not even picking it up. And I'm like, you know what he's saying, right? This guy's named Hyman Ross. And this guy over here, you know, this is this is what's happening right here. He thinks that he killed him, that he didn't. It's a whole thing. And she's like, I didn't get that. I go, here, I'm going to rewind it. And now that you know this, try to figure it out. And then she's like, she's getting it. But we watch Casino as well. And when Remo does the fucking, when he goes, yeah. take care of him, the fucking, <laughs> the, the, the no, ring and the my, finger. My favorite thing is when he goes, let me ask you something. Let me, put your hand here. Yeah. He goes, let me ask you something. The little guy, mm. is he banging the Jew's wife? Yeah. Because if he is. And then, then he's like, I don't know. Then he goes, okay. <laughs> he slaps his head. Yeah. Okay. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. He goes, goes, we can't have that. We can't have it. <laughs> can't have that. Dude, and we we're talking about that too because um, we'll, we'll go to Joey because Joey's uh, another engineer we have, and he's um, from here, born and raised. And we're talking about how, like, you know, the housing development, it's growing. It's spreading. Like, sooner or later, they're going to hit more bodies in these fucking deserts when they're digging up. Well, that's what happened when they were building Giant Stadium. Giants? Oh, over there in the fucking Meadowlands? Yeah, there was fucking bodies everywhere. They uh, they stopped they stopped letting them know because every time they found a body, it was a crime scene. They're, I think I read the article. Oh. After like 15 bodies, they were just like, fuck it. <laughs> they were like, we need to develop this shit. The season starts in fucking two more weeks. Well, I mean, you know, again, uh, a lot of people don't <laughs> remember. remember well, because Italian-Americans, I mean, we were the streets for fucking 80 years. <laughs> we need our football. Fuck their closure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, yeah. Italian Americans were the streets for yeah, almost yeah. 80 years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, everything that now that you know, from the clothes to the rackets to mm -hmm. the to the character to the terminology, that was pretty much us. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we killed a lot. We <laughs> killed a lot of each other. I think I read somewhere it's like uh, some ridiculous amount of percentage, like five, six percent. Yeah, dude. and then they, you know, there was bodies everywhere. I had a friend of mine that was a, a frogman that went into the Hudson. Yeah. And, you know, when they look for stuff, and I asked him, I go, what's down there? He goes, you fucking have no idea. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, you got you got remains from, like, the gangs in New York. Damn. Oh, shit, From, yeah. like, the dead rabbits and shit. Oh, no. And that's pistols crazy. and stuff from the Civil War. Just tossed down there. Just bah, bah, all that shit. shit. And it's funny, too, because, like, especially you're talking about in water, fucking Lake Mead was drying up. They're finding canisters, uh, barrels of people buried inside of them. Well, that's Chicago where they were clipping people in there. Oh, yeah, here, too, or over there? Mm hmm well, uh, in Casino, I think they really they found him in Iowa. Yeah. Oh, who? Which? Oh, the guy. The guy that uh, uh, Nikki, Nikki Spilatro. Spilatro. Anthony yeah. Spilatro was his name. But the um. But no, they found um. Well, Chicago's its own. It's 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 part. It was part of it, but it's its own thing. Yeah. Last 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 summer they found what. They found a dude in the. Uh, they found the barrel in Lake Mead, and they opened it up, and there was a dead body in there, and it was pretty preserved. And they had still had the ID, and they could they identified who it was. But there's like they go, this gets lower. They're gonna find a lot more fucking barrels in that motherfucker. Yeah, Italians, they they left a lot of bodies around. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was crazy when I was in Tahoe? Um, I met somebody there that was telling me about Jacques Cousteau's son took a submarine down there. Oh, you see it? You found it? Oh, yeah. Where uh, somewhere down where in Lake Tahoe? Oh, okay. So it's like one of the deepest uh, lakes. Yeah, freshwater lakes because mm -hmm. it was formed by a glacier. Uh, but down in the bottom of the lake, the bodies are preserved. Oh shit! Because it's frozen, and there's like natives in headdresses. What lot, the they, fuck? They said there's a lot of Asian like people that worked on in the silver mines down mm -hmm. there. Uh, a lot of guys, a lot of gangsters down there. That's crazy. And then every once in a while, there was a story of a body that floated to the top that was missing since the 70s. But he was he drowned. Uh. But he was looked dressed in his clothes and uh -huh. because it's crazy. so cold down there. Yeah, yeah. Fucking no. Is that is that what they found in the drum? Yeah, the yeah. They said it was 1980s and. Yeah, they found What's it. the name? Did they identify him? Is he, Ita is he Italian? <laughs> <laughs> they do identify. They said that the. Uh, Fuck, because they, they found the ID of him and shit like that. But it's a trip, man, because, uh, yeah, we're watching the Casino, and 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 they like that. They were into that, or she was into that. She was like, this is crazy. I was like, yeah. She was like, is this all real? And I was like, this is all real, dude. And then I was telling her, too, about the um, 
the girl that was on there, she's like, and introducing the Rothstein dancers. Like yeah, that, that, they did a real show. Yeah. Well, that's that that was Pesci's wife at the time, and um, like it, there's a Dateline about her um, and her brother murdering somebody or something like that. I can't remember the full story, but I know that that Joe Pesci had to go to court and like testify on her character or whatever, not. But that's that I was like, she was like, no way. I was like, yeah, we'll go look it up and watch that shit. Dude, growing up in Jersey, like during uh, Castellano, when Castellano got clipped, mm -hmm. there was stuff all the time, man. Bodies all everywhere. And then the Colombo Wars, I think, were in the early 2000s. I, I mean, I'm sorry, early 90s, because I was in my 20s when that was going on. Um, but, you know, it would always be in the news. It would mm -hmm. just, you know, that's where all the jokes came from, you yeah. know, body in the trunk. Yeah. You know, uh, but yeah, a lot of a lot of young people don't realize that that was an actual yeah thing. I mean, <laughs> even with the, with the Italians, I mean, they, you know, they threw us all in jail, you know. And uh, there's nothing in Vegas, but there's a museum downtown you can go see. <laughs> yeah, with actual people in it. But mm -hmm. it, it's it almost becomes like cartoony and fiction, almost like like pirates, like the pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. You know, pirates were ruthless. Yeah. And, you know, now it's a ride. Now it's like characterized. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's it's portrayed but, by Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> but for both times, right? Yeah. Wasn't he in uh what? Donnie Brasco? Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> and right. he played Whitey Bulger. Whitey Bulger as well. Um But no, all that stuff's I I I mean, you know, that I I it wasn't that long ago to me. No. No. It, and uh but yeah, so now we gotta watch Godfather Three. So cause and and uh yeah, everyone's like I, I wasn't that mad at it. Put it in chronological me. order, though. Watch the one where they put all the Godfathers in chronological order. Make her sit through yeah. six, seven hours of it. No, it, it's uh, I, I bought the DVD because, like I said, I went and bought all, all my DVDs over, and that's the code. It's called the Coda series or some Dude, shit like it's that. It's so good. And that's what we've been and watching. And the deleted scenes are in there too. Yeah, and that's what we've been watching because she was like, "Oh my god, this is three hours long," and I go, "Yeah, this is this is the the, the extended version of everything." I was like, "You're gonna fucking be a film major once you're done with it," because that's something I love. You should about show DVDs. her uh, Citizen Kane. Uh, yeah, I was gonna. Did uh, you ever watch it? I I did not. I only oh, seen wow. pieces of it. And, you ever uh, see Citizen Kane, Jerome? I have actually. Yeah. I was in a film class and we watched it. Oh yeah, yeah. I only seen pieces of it, like uh, like I seen pieces of Roadhouse. So it's like it's like Tombstone is great. Uh, Tombstone's fucking amazing. I already bought that. That's I bought, one I bought of my that. top fives, dude. That's that's definitely Val Kilmer in that is. I I, I mean he's he's up there with uh, Pesci and uh, Casino and Goodfellas. Yeah, that, I love I love that scene too in, in Casino when he calls the guy from the bank. He goes, Yeah, I, I think oh, yeah. I want my money back. <laughs> he yeah. goes, I can't pull it out. He goes, you know, I don't really think you understand what it is that I do. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to come down to it. If you don't have my money, I'm going to crack your fucking head open. Yeah. And he goes, uh, and then while you're getting out of a coma, I'll just be getting out of jail. And I'll come down there and I'll crack your fucking head open again, too. Because I'm stupid. I don't yeah. give a fuck. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's <laughs> you put my money to sleep and put your fucking brain to sleep. <laughs> yeah. and then Sam when it, when it, with the cigar. Yeah. What, are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you can't talk to him like that. He's a civilian. Yeah. All right, but he's pulling his pants up. I think he got the idea. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're walking around like John fucking Barrymore. <laughs> Pink robe with your fucking, fucking cigarette all this. <laughs> That's love, when they meet in the, when they meet in the desert. I, I was like, pay attention to this. Watch oh, this. Yeah. Don't ever go over my head. You've been warned. You've been warned. I asked you. I asked you. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. When the fuck did I ever ask you anything? <laughs> yeah. It's such. If a, it wasn't for me, every gangster would be taking a piece of your Jew ass. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't ever go over my head. It's uh, he's such a great performer, and it was funny because uh, Amber really liked the part where there's a one little like you know there's like in movies there's like something little that you just like like the whole the, the ring thing when he's when he does this yeah. the fucking well Amber likes the part where they're. Uh, they're talking on the street and they gotta cover their mouths. He's yeah, like yeah. two face, and uh, and and he goes, he goes, hold on, who the fuck's this guy? Who's this guy walking over? Here? It's just some, it <laughs> yeah, some like, random guy. <laughs> yeah, just some random guy. You know what's a great uh, too when he goes to get his money? Uh, oh, and Frankie uh, Vincent's with him. They uh, were in a band together, you know. Oh, Frankie Vincent, uh, yeah. And, and Pesci when they grew up together, they, oh. they they used to play in a band together. And uh, when he when he goes, uh, that's why you have my money ready for me. Yeah, yeah. That's but a, then when Frankie Vincent goes, smarten up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my grandfather talked. Yeah, he goes, he goes, I thought you're laying it. No, I'm not. I'm taking I'm like, it. I'm taking it. Don't eat it. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I thought you were laying. He was like, you thought I was laying it. That's why you had it fucking ready for me. So we can slap you know shit. what else is a great idiot? Well, I guess uh, whatever the term is, idiosyncrasy. Yeah. Um, is when De Niro's in the bar and Frenchie comes when they're talking about the first heist, when they're going to walk in and get the money. Oh, yeah. And he comes over and Henry goes, this is the guy I was telling you about. And he goes, yeah. And De Niro's like. <laughs> like just you know, calm, calm back. Calm. He goes, you're looking at him. <laughs> I'm the I'm the midnight I'm the commandant I'm the midnight to five guy. <laughs> but remember when he when he's smoking he's getting all right he goes all right all right yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you right now I know we uh, we got to wrap this up mm -hmm. if you really the the best Scorsese movie that really encompasses the way the Italians were back then is Raging Bull. Oh. The way fucking Pesci is with De Niro uh, all the subtleties when they're out to eat they all come in with the suits. The one he beats the shit yeah, out of Frankie, Frankie Vincent. Yeah, in the thing. Don't make my brother look like a fucking asshole. Yeah, Don't you he, make my fuck, fucking get, your, get up now. Like, and he smacks him with the glass. Like all that shit. That's that's how they were. <laughs> when he when he's in the uh, in the sauna and he's trying to lose weight and he goes, just a little, little bit of ice. A little piece. Just a little <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the, the uh, one of my favorite parts too in that movie is when because uh, it's one of the best. Like it, I I'll bought tell that. you mine, and we wrap it up after you. Yeah, I bought that. I bought that one. That's another one too. I there. got two. Yeah, and it, when he goes uh, when. Uh, when when he or uh, she's they're talking about how Gennaro's a good looking kid and yeah. then the wife goes the wife uh, Pe Pesci wife goes she goes hey, she didn't mean nothing by it he's just a good looking kid and he looks over like don't you fuck my brother no he goes <laughs> oh whatever in a getting between my brother and his wife take the kids and go in the other room <laughs> Your ass over he's like, whoa, whoa. then he's like we'll take him out but don't tell Lenore I, I, he's bringing his girlfriend <laughs> yeah you bring it over bring it over you're gonna burn it that's that, my that, other favorite that's part. a oh. when, when he goes you bring it it defeats its purpose <laughs> then the guy's yelling in the window he goes, I'll break your fucking everybody's yelling <laughs> yeah the whole thing <laughs> ah you I'll give you a fucking beating I'll you, show you a beating you animal you <laughs> have you seen it have you ever seen Raging Bull never seen Raging Bull dude it's it's uh, black and white and it's gonna it's gonna seem like it's super Super old, but the way it's shot, it's well, they fucking shot it in awesome. black and white. Yeah, it's, it's it didn't get me be. down, Ray. Yeah, it's really good. It's it's a, it's a really good boxing movie. It's about Jake LaMotta, the Raging Bull, oh, okay. and uh, you know it's his story. It's it's fucking it's amazing. Such a great movie. I, and he didn't win an Academy Award for that. No, he didn't win an Academy Award for Goodfellas. Didn't win one for Casino. Godfather, he won it. Uh, the Godfather Part Two. He won Who? Best Supporting. Uh, De Niro. No, no, no. Talk about Scorsese. <laughs> no, he won it for the uh, Departed. That's, That's what he the wanted. One. He didn't even get gangs in New York. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not too big on oh, gangs in New York. Come on. <laughs> you know what's, what's his name? Uh, the Butcher? The Butcher. And on the last day when the Lord rested, he scooted his ass off the side of Europe and took a dump. <laughs> Hence Ireland. <laughs> no disrespect. He's like, none taken, sir. <laughs> he um uh, that's crazy how he goes in and out of the accent too. Like he goes from like a like a like a like an English form, formal person, and then all of a sudden he gets to New York well, on it. Well what's cool is in the transformation <clears throat> where the New York accent comes from, and it's fascinating if you look up the history of the accents in America, because Southern accent is is a bit of a, a British and, and uh, uh Irish Gaelic. Oh, I can see that. You know? Um but it, it's the Dutch, and there's like that evolution when he talks like this, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. What's the matter? Your, your mouth sewn shut with honey juice? <laughs> but you hear it's like it's like a little mid-transformation. And then the way the Italians ended up talking mm. is influenced the New York accent even more. Because, you, you know, people with a New York accent, they always go, you sound Italian. Yeah. You associate that. Mm. But there was an addition to that that was different. Like my grandmother would say words like, "It's it sounded British." Like she'd be like, "You want a bottle?" <laughs> they wouldn't say their teas. Yeah. Um, you know stuff like that. But we gotta wrap this up. All Let's right, see. listen. If you're in Arizona, I'm at the Tempe Improv Friday. Two shows. Um, Carlos, you're overseas. You'll be gone for 15 days. No, uh, I can do one more next week, uh, and then I'll be gone. But to, uh, this Friday, J I'm taking Jamal with me, and we're gonna go hit the Well Comedy Club in Bakersfield. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> da uh, Daniel Betts is a com uh, co another comic who uh, opened up a comedy club out there, and uh, you know, got to got to support, got to go and uh, take care of take care of who would take care of you. <laughs> I actually performed in Bakersfield a couple times. Yeah. At the uh, yeah, you did the fucking thing. Yeah, with um, at Vince. the Country Western. Uh, the Country Wild West tour. Yeah, but the Country Western Museum's there. Okay. Uh, God, Buck Owens. Buck Owens. Uh, dude, they have a they have a Cadillac on the wall. The guy that owned it, mm -hmm. and he put it on the wall. Because, Sideways. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. on the wall, <laughs> and it's because uh, he wa I guess they want he won it from Elvis in a card game, so it's one of Elvis's Cadillacs. But that thing's dope, man. It's got like 
Colt 45s as, as uh, door handles. Oh, okay. Dude, if you check it out, it's really dope. I, I, we, yeah, we're going to go hanging out up there. But all right, guys, that's it. I hope you guys had a, a, a wonderful Easter. Uh, to all, all my uh, Jewish friends out there, I hope you had a great Passover. To all my atheists out there, happy you. <laughs> I hope you had a good you. Uh, was Ramadan as well? Had a good Sunday. Was Ramadan in? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So to all my Muslim, for our Muslim listeners out there, happy Ramadan. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. So God bless.